Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining me and thank you chat managers for your help. I appreciate it. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I, uh, you know, there are a couple of things. Well, the uh, Supreme Court is still <laughs> with their behavior or the, the, old, the old argument from yesterday about uh, Roe uh, is still basically uh, reverberating in the minds, in everyone's mind, and also due to the questions that some of those people ask. And you know, I said yesterday, and I want to make it clear today, they are leaning towards uh, basically, if whatever it is, skeleton, if they leave behind or do away with it, I can't tell the difference. I'm sorry. But the reason why I am putting it this way is because, except for Robert, who is looking for a way to do something and trying to bring consensus among the conservatives. I don't feel he's being successful because, yes, they, you know, they, call the, the, they, they call the court the, the rabbit court, but uh, they should call it the Heritage Foundation court instead because intuitively I feel like saying they made a deal, and according to what I've read, uh, the first question these people had to answer or had to believe in, the first thing they had to believe in is that they, they had to be anti-choice. And once that's been uh, confirmed by people like Heritage Foundation and others, uh, they are in. So people like, uh, well, we know who the conservative judges are, okay? All of them, they are leaning towards, let me put it this way, Justice Thomas, Alito, Gossage and the other two. Okay, those three, they definitely are in the camp of doing away with it. The other two, the last two that were, no, what did the last two that were nominated by Trump? Uh, that lady and the guy who was accused of, well, basically, by, you know, he did some pretty bad, thing to, bad, bad things to women, Kavanaugh. Uh, I feel like saying they are a bit terrified. I know they are saying Kavanaugh is open to, or according to his statement, because I didn't hear it, I only heard a snippet of what they said, he's made it known that he's open to overturning Roe or do something. I feel like what they are saying, what they are doing is they're setting us up, they're letting us know. They want to do away with it. And to the way I feel like saying, three of them are leaning towards definitely ban abortion, or at least in the states that are asking for it. Uh, and the others, the, the other two, Kavanaugh and that lady, I don't recall her name right now, uh, they don't like what they are hearing on TV. Let's put it that way. They don't feel they are getting a fair treatment, you know, because people are saying basically the court has been bought. And to what if when I focus on them, that's what I get. And Barrett is pretty angry because she, she believe it or not, she's pretty thin skinned. Barrett, that is. Uh, there are certain things, she has trigger points. And whenever 
they say those things about, there are certain things if they say about her, oh yeah, she can really lose it. So uh, I feel like saying, don't be surprised if they, intuitively I feel, what's, that's what some, of the, some people in the media are saying as well, and it resonates with me. They leave a skeleton or they do away with it, but it feels like to me they are leaning towards not doing away with Roe. This can change with these people because there is a lot of back and forth going on. Okay, believe it or not, everything else they, uh, every other lawsuit they have are secondary. This is major to them. So, exactly, they feel it's too risky to just do away with Roe. That's the way I am getting it when I focus on the conservatives. I mean, three are for it, but those two, not Gossage, uh, Governor, and the lady, okay? They, they are very concerned. First of all, the way they were put on the court. Every time they brought that stuff up, Governor doesn't like it, and that lady doesn't like it either. So, among other things that trigger them, and the notion that they don't care is not true. They, oh, mostly those two, they really care. Uh, they, they are somewhat thin-skinned. Gossage as well, but Alito, Thomas, and, 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 other, the, other, and the other one, they, those guys really don't care because they're doing, I'm not quite sure, you know. I know Thomas is, no, oh my God, this guy, every time I see him, supposedly he was nominated, from what I understand, to replace a giant like Marshall. What a disaster. But anyway, uh, don't, my prediction is regardless of what the court does, uh, Congress will do something. I know some people don't believe it, but I don't feel it's, from what I understand, somebody put it, they're going to codify, codify the law or something like that. Yeah, Nancy Pelosi will get it done, believe it or not. Uh, that's why, because she understands exactly what's going on, and also because of the kids, her kids, you know, are, she has a daughter, one of her daughters is very outspoken, and trust me, even if Nancy didn't want or was not paying attention, her daughter would have gotten her attention on this. Because when I focus on Nancy, I was doing that last night and this morning. That daughter is not taking any of this sitting down. And yes, she does talk to her mom about it. And uh, something will be done. That's too, I mean, Nancy would do it anyway, but her daughters are not sit, taking this sitting down. So, yeah. It, this is big. So that's why I'm feel, I feel like saying to everyone, no matter what happened, don't lose your head. Uh, this is going to be done in a different way. So no worries. And the other uh, reference is uh, Liz Cheney did something last night. I hope those of you who saw the clip, when she said... Something, well, she sent a warning to Trump. I don't remember exactly because I didn't write it down. If you watch the clip about the session that January 6th Commission had last night, uh, when they voted to basically send Gito, uh indict Clark, and she sent a warning to Trump. Uh, she didn't say she was warning him. But intuitively, I feel there is something behind the scene with the January 6th Commission. They have a lot of information. They know everything. Calling Clark in means nothing, whether he wants to testify or not. They would love to have him because there are things that they know. They would like the people responsible for doing those things or saying whatever it is they said. They, that's what they're doing right now. They're putting the fine points on what they already know, and that's why they want Clark. And don't be surprised. Uh, I know Clark said 
he's going to take the fifth. Uh, a deal will be made, it feels like to me. And Clark will testify. I have no idea how that's going to work. But Clark knows one thing, and like I, I mentioned it yesterday, and Clark knows if he doesn't do it, uh, you know, he's, I mean, he's not a young guy. I'm sure he's probably in his 50s. He has some life left. He doesn't want to leave it, you know, uh, being financially, you know, uh, in, a, in a bad financial situation. So I feel like saying he's going to do everything he can. First of all, to prevent from, you know, uh, prevent Trump, or at least do it in a way so even if Trump throws him under the bus, it won't make any difference. He wants to be on the right side of history. Number three, number three uh, money. And yes, he will write a book. I'm not quite sure exactly when. Uh, but once this is over, resolved, uh, Clark will write a book but he will testify. He doesn't want to go to jail. He wants to clean up his act. He feels he did, he did something stupid. Okay, his ambition got the best of him. <laughs> so yeah, he will come clean and Maddo as well. And a lot of other people, uh, they've realized that Trump is not coming back. And they are also looking at the way Republicans are behaving. Yes, historically, uh, they should take over the House in 22. But I don't think that's going to happen if Democrats play their game right. It's, it's for Democrats to lose. And as I'm saying this, I'm seeing Abrams. Uh, good luck to camp. Because this time is not going to be like the last time. This woman has proven herself uh, being able to get things done. She has proven that she's a leader. On top of it, she's very smart. Uh, good luck to Kemp. <laughs> uh, don't be surprised. I, I have not focused on this yet, but it feels like to me this time it's going to be the second time it's going to be a charm. I think that's how they say it. Yeah, but I'm going to circle back to uh, to Trump. I feel like saying Liz Cheney was telling Trump to get ready. He's going to be subpoenaed if he doesn't want to come and in front of the January 6th uh, committee voluntarily. Mark my word, this is coming. And I told you guys a long time ago, I saw Trump sitting in court. Uh, well, he will be sitting in other courts, but this is going to be one of them. And if you think he's going to play the, the delay card, he's in for a big surprise. Trump has done so many stupid things. Uh, he doesn't know how to make friends. All he knows how to do is bully people and uh, try to demean you and everything. What's his is his, what yours, what's yours is his too. He's going to learn a hard lesson and Liz Cheney will take him down. That's what I feel. And she was letting him know last night, get ready. I don't think he got the message. He's too arrogant. He's too busy running around giving interviews and those people, I guess, you know, regardless of how much money someone has, that doesn't mean you have high self-esteem. Anyone who associates themselves with this guy, I, you know, it's, it's unbelievable to me. But uh, from what I understand, there are people in the area where he lives that who can afford going to his club because from what I understand, it's pretty expensive. Uh, 
so you can go and walk by every afternoon and get applause and all kinds of stuff. But uh, I wish him luck. This is not going to be pretty for Trump. And I feel that's what Liz Cheney was trying to say last night. Uh, one other thing, somebody asked me yesterday what's going on with Chris Cuomo. You know, the Cuomo family is a pretty tight knit. Uh, you know, they're pretty tight, you know. And I don't feel Chris, by the way, Chris Cuomo, I'm sure all of you have heard, he has been suspended indefinitely. Those guys, I don't feel it was, well, maybe, you know, I don't think, I don't, I, I don't, I didn't feel the way they, they are, CNN views it. He didn't view, Chris Cuomo didn't view it that way. He viewed it as, you know, he's helping his brother. That's his brother. That's his blood. A job is a job. When the day comes for the corp corporate people to, to kick, you, kick you to the curb, they will. But if you are from a close-knit family, oh, we're going down together. So that's the way they roll, the Cuomo's. And uh, that's what happened. He was trying to help his brother, and I can understand that. You know, I'm not saying uh, Andrew was right. Andrew, yeah, I think so, Andrew. Uh, you know, harassing women, you don't, you, that's a no-no. But I feel Chris felt it was not true and he sprang into action. But I don't feel uh, it's a done deal at CNN. Let's put it that way. It's not, uh, I don't feel the people in charge really want to get rid of them. Let's put it that way. Maybe, I don't know how long his contract is, maybe they will, you know, they will keep him until his contract is over. Electra Storm says, but CNN will keep Jeffrey Tobin. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Oh, my God. The guy, yeah, who showed his private uh, and Zoom uh, is okay to keep. Yeah, well, I didn't think about that. That's a very good. I'm glad I looked at the screen and I saw your, <laughs> your comment. You know, uh, that's why possibly where I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. They are not sure what they're going to do. And I don't see him at the door yet. I will take it. I have to take a look into that. But as I'm speaking, I'm not seeing him with his boxes under his arm walking out yet. Or however it's going to be shown to me. Uh, but I'll keep looking whenever they make that decision. But I would be surprised if they get rid of him. But that's what happened. It's just blood standing for, you know, for blood. That, that, that's the way they view it. And... He went to battle to help his brother. That's, that's what happened. Okay, another one more thing. Oh, Putin. I, 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 I went over this last week, and I don't feel he has changed. He's pushing his luck. He knows Biden. He knows Biden is not going to go for his uh, shenanigans. But you know something? Guys, do you remember... I have many times in the past, whenever Trump was going to meet with Putin, I was always aggravated because I knew Trump was saying things, be, you know, hoping that we don't know. I feel that's why Putin is behaving the way he's behaving today. I have news for him. We may not uh, sent soldiers to Ukraine to face Russians. But for some reason, I feel like saying Biden is not in this fight empty-handed. Yes, geographically, we are at a disadvantage. But I feel like saying 
I don't see an invasion yet if, if I see it. Oh my God, I had a dream this morning. I got to share this dream with you guys. Although it may not have to do with that. I don't think so. But uh, Putin may end up with the shortest end of the stick. And I feel Biden has, you know, Putin doesn't want to die. He has a huge ego. If he knows he's going to lose or something is going to hurt him pretty badly, he wants to hang around, live as long as he can to enjoy his money, his ill-gotten money. That's what Putin wants. He doesn't want to die. So because uh, any war with the United States, it's, it's, you know, it's, it, like, like, I'm sure mutual, you've, you've all heard of mutual active, mutual something destruction. That's what will happen. So Putin doesn't want to die. Uh, I feel Biden is well equipped to handle this. And uh, Putin right now is saber rattling. He thinks that, from what I understand, they tested a few uh, hypersonic missiles. And one, from what I understand, he tested into killing a satellite as if we are the only one who have satellites as if we are the only one, there are certain uh, equipment in space or even on the ground that he doesn't use. He's saber rattling. Uh, my prediction is he lose. Uh, Murray Solva said, Milo Craig Parker Tower said that Biden will not resume his term because the Democrats will make a coup. He said that a woman associated with Trump would take over. I don't know who the person is, Craig Parker. Okay. I, I have no idea. So another <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that name. I don't know who the person is. I'm sorry. I should not, but because I was reading, I didn't think about it. Uh, a woman associated with Trump would take over. Are you kidding? No one associated with Trump will take over the U.S. government. And the notion that uh, Craig, I mean, Biden will not resume his term. Biden is not going anywhere. The Democrats will make a coup. Democrats are not going to do any coups. I don't know what this guy is talking about. I don't know what, <laughs> I have no idea what that is, but I'll tell you what. Uh, Trump's numbers, poll numbers may be down now, they will bounce back. Uh, the woman, you know, he's probably talking about, he's not, she's not, if, if, if there is a woman who's going to win for, who would run for president, who has a chance, would be Liz Cheney. I don't see a Republican woman, and she's not in the Trump's camp. Okay? Uh, I don't see any woman in the Trump's camp. I don't know what this means. That's going to, let me put, nobody in the Trump camp would become president of this country, period. And the, 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 what the Supreme Court is doing, like all these shenanigans, you know, wanting to overthrow Roe and all these things, watch. You know, Republicans are going to be sorry. I mean, that's not the only thing they've been doing. They've been, you know, showing us who they are and people believe them. Uh, guys, for some reason, I'm not afraid yet. Of, I know, yeah, we, this country is in a very bad uh, place. But I, I, I don't know what this means. I'm sorry. I should not have answered that question. Please, next time, friends, do not post psychic's name. Who's, if, you know, I'm sure the person is a psychic. And ask me a question about what they say. I should not have answered that question, but I, you know, I, I, in very bad habit, I see something, I read it aloud, and then uh, I answered. I should not have done that. But next time, please don't post anybody's name. Just post what the person said. And if I, you know, I, I, I'm gonna, going forward, I'm not going to do that anymore. Okay. 
Marshall Green is saying, Milo, another far right lie that is being told. We have the power on this channel. Marshall, I don't know what this means. Okay. Let me look at one more thing I believe I wanted to mention. Uh, did you guys... Okay. There is uh, uh, election workers in Georgia started something new. And I feel this is going to be another option that people that are being harassed by, let's say, for example, all the types of group like the Proud Boys and these people, uh, this is another tool that's going to be used to bankrupt these people and put them out of commission. Uh, there is a website, it's a propaganda website, and uh, because of some of the things that they posted, people went to the home of election workers, and somebody, so one of them, some guy wanted to do a civil arrest or something like that. Uh, they are suing the website. And I was focusing on it this morning. I feel those election workers will win. And I feel like saying other people are going to take these people on as we go forward. Uh, like, you know, Mom for America and these type of people who are uh, propagating all kinds of anti-vaccine uh, 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 propagandas and stuff like that they too will be going bankrupt and they're not to the sun future because they're going to be sued. Their behavior is causing a lot of people from getting death threats, you know, all kinds of stuff. They are going to come into focus and they will be sued out of every single penny they have or they will ever earn. That's my prediction. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Hannah Webb, you reminded me. I, I, I'm going to read your, your question. I had a dream this morning. It seemed like I was in a house, and one of my sisters, the one I was staying with in uh, Georgia, was there. And for some reason, you know, the house, and then that downstairs there's a garage. And when I, I don't know where in the house I was, I looked down into the garage and water. But it seemed like the garage, instead of having a garage door, opaque. Instead of having an opaque garage door, it was glass. And it's like water, it's probably seawater that was plowing or pushing uh, sand as it I didn't get into the garage yet, but this, the, the sand was against the door, the, 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 that plexiglass door or whatever door uh, was made pushing against it. I'm like, oh my God, I got to get out of here. So I ran back upstairs and I got out of the place through a window and my sister didn't want to get out. I'm like, are you stupid? Let's get out of here. You know, and then I yanked her out and I, I walked away and I woke up. I mean, it's good in a sense that nothing happened to me, nothing happened to my sister, but I'm trying to, I mean, this is not good. Something is going to happen somewhere. I'm not quite sure where or what's going to happen. I don't feel it's a, world, a prediction about the world, no, nor Florida. It may have to do with my, me and my family or something that's going to happen and we're going to be okay. But when I woke up this morning, it was kind of scary. In any event, I thought I would share that. Anna Webby saying, I had a dream last night that I lost a job because of my Asperger's, uh, even though it wasn't interfering with my job. The boss was a bigot, and I, am, and I beat him up. Only in our dreams. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat up the, the boss, that's for sure. Marsha Green, I agree with that. Marsha Green says, Milo, we have the power to make sure Biden is elected again. We have a voice on this channel and good will win out over bad. Absolutely. I don't know. My channel is so puny. <laughs> So, but I'm going to continue to do what I am doing, that's for sure. Okay. Jules C. 
says, I, I, I'm not quite sure what this is about, so. Oh, Debbie Johnson, yes, I just told the dream, but I don't know. I'm not quite sure what the dream is about, really, but I didn't like it. It scared me when I woke up. It may have to do with me because I'm terrified on how much they're going to, because from what I understand, this is my first year in Florida, as we all know. Uh, and it seems like I, ever since I heard about that lady somewhere in Florida, they raised her rent $700 a month more, you know, an increase of $700. I'm like, I've been looking behind me since, so that may be what it is, you know, it may, because I got out safe, so that may mean no matter what happens, I'll be okay. Yes, I know that, but I thought I would share. Okay. Mary Hackett says, me, Lou, what Chris did was criminal. Jeffrey Tobin was an embarrassment. <laughs> Chris got names of the accusers and intimidated them. Chris C. was one of CNN darlings. He's in much legal trouble. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what he did. You, so I'm not even going to give you, uh, uh, Marie, I don't know. Yeah, you, I'm sure you're right, but that would have been dumb for him to do, though. You know, I've heard... He interfered, but I don't know how he interfered, but that, was, that would really be stupid to contact those women. Oh, my God. Oh, I, hope, I hope that's not true. That's really bad. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Please, everyone, thank you, Ron, for reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up button. I would appreciate it because uh, YouTube uses it as that's one of the major data points they use to place, you know, everyone's videos. So please hit the thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Let's see. I'm looking for questions. Let's see. I'm going to scroll down. You know, believe it or not, I just read somebody posted, you know, something about the Supreme Court. You know, Democrats are, you know, kind of slow to act and still want to behave the way they used to behave when they were gentle ladies and gentlemen and, and you know, and, and Congress. I don't know exactly, but there are two things. The, 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 the raw situation, okay, the, uh, the Voting Rights Act, I don't know how these things are going to pass, but I feel a lot of those shenanigans Republicans are doing behind the scenes, or not behind the scenes, but in plain sight, they're trying to rig everything uh, so in order for them to have their way. I don't feel they're going to win. Yes, they can continue rigging all they want until the feds come down. And you know something I was thinking about yesterday, you guys? And it's of concern to me. I don't feel the states are going to win, but I don't know how many of you recall. I think it was last week or, before, or the week before last. I mentioned that there was a Republican, I don't know, what his capacity was, was talking about basically shredding the state constitution. Uh, I was thinking about that yesterday. And to whatever I feel, I have not heard this anyway. If you guys heard it somewhere, please post it in the comment line or here. Uh, some of them are looking for ways to circumvent the, the Constitution to don't lead, so, so that they don't listen to the federal government. There is a movement like that going on behind the scenes. Uh, Republicans are so power hungry, they are looking for every way possible to get away with everything and anything that they do. I feel it's going to backfire. I don't feel it's going to work. 
you know, those governors and uh, House members and whatever, uh, state House members think they're going to get away with this, they're dumb. They're simply shooting themselves in the foot, just like I saw Jim Jordan posted it, you know, tweeted this morning something like, I'm, you know, uh, some Americans are done with COVID. I'm like, yeah, I, I, he forgot. There was a prominent pastor, I forget his name, who died either yesterday or the day before yesterday from COVID. He was a, a major anti-vaxxer and stuff like that. But all, Jim, the, Jim Jordan of this world will have a price to pay as well because they are, they are contributing, first of all, in slowing down uh, the recovery, our recovery, whether it's from, you know, uh, financial recovery, the country being able to get past this pandemic. Jordan and his ilk are standing in the way. And yes, the Republican base will come to realize that as well, because a lot of their people, like that pastor, yeah, he was taking ivermectin, some stupid thing like that, didn't work very well. Yeah, anti-vaxxers, they're gonna learn the hard way, like I've said a long time ago. They will learn. They are learning now. More of them are, are getting the vaccine, by the way. They simply are not talking about it. All right. <laughs> Diane Parra says, yes, they are done with COVID because they are dead. That's true. <laughs> okay, friends. Let me see. Come on, Monga. How will this new variant affect America? Well, it's here already. It's been here, I feel. I'm sorry. I, I think I said that before. But I also said that uh, I, didn't f I didn't feel scared. I didn't see a lot of people dying. I mean, simply because we have another uh, version of this thing. Okay. Uh, I feel, you know, continue protecting our, continue to protect ourselves, wear masks, get boosted. We're going to be fine. Protect ourselves and let Republicans continue to propagate lies to their base. But I don't feel Delta, I mean, not Delta, is going to be a game changer like Delta was. And even Delta, the, the vaccine worked for some reason. And I said that the vaccine is going to stand to this challenge. Yeah, even if, we, if they need to tweak it a little bit, you know, people who have been vaccinated care about their health. They wear masks and take precautions. Even those who came late into agreeing to get the vaccine, they realize, they're taking it because they realize this is no, this is no joke. So uh, we're going to be okay. I don't feel anything is going to get shut down. Or I don't think we're going to go back to the same place we were last February. Okay. Uh, find ourselves in a situation where we had to shut the country down. Not even the airlines, I don't feel are going to be shut down. So we're going to be okay. We'll, we will get out of this. Okay, friends, thank you very much for spending time with me. I will, uh, and I want to say thank you to the chat monitors for your help. I appreciate it. If you like the channel, please subscribe. And if you would like a reading for me, the link to my website is below the video, psychicmilu.com. Or you can send me an email at psychicmilu at aol.com. Uh, we can negotiate a time that's good for both of us. And if you like the channel, please subscribe. Thank you, chat managers. I, I will see you all tomorrow. Till then, bye.